In today's video, I show you the anatomy of the labrum of the hip and we have a look at several types of labral tears. This video was requested by one of my patrons, Patrick. The really cool cases come at the end of this video, so make sure to stick around and watch it till the end. This is just a normal labrum, so you understand the figures that I will show you just in a second here. Now, this is how we zoom in, so we are at the superior region here, this is the labrum, blue is the cartilage and this color here is the underlying acetabular roof, so this is the bone. So sometimes you just have these little gaps here, like a little cleft between the labrum and the cartilage, so this is called a chondrolabral separation, where the labrum is not nicely attached to the cartilage anymore. So this is something you frequently see but the labrum is still nicely attached to the bone. So you can call this a cleft or a labrochondral separation. And here we already have the first difficulty because depending on the literature, there is something called a sublabral sulcus. So something like you have in the shoulder. So this sulci or sulci can occur basically at every location if you go into the literature and are considered to be like a norma normal variant and not necessarily a pathologic separation. So if you name this a cleft, then you leave it open to interpretation whether it's an actual pathology or just a variant. And if the borders are really, really smooth, then you have probably to deal with a sulcus, which can happen at, as I said, any location, and they seem to be present in up to 25% of patients. So there is some inconsistency, and in some papers they refer to a tear only if it's detached from the bone, and they say these are just sulci, whereas in other studies, such as the one by um, Dr. Schmaranzer in European Radiology in 2015, they named these control labor separations. But maybe it's just the same thing, but just with different names. Sometimes you see a tear running all the way up here, so the labrum is detached from the cartilage, but also from the acetabular rim. But it's not going through the whole substance here, so that's a partial tear of the labrum. And if it's going all the way through, then you have a complete labral tear. Sometimes you have tears in this longitudinal orientation running towards the tip of the labrum, either from the tip in this direction, but frequently you also see it in this direction here. So from the detachment in direction of the tip. This is frequently in combination with detachments here or separations here or partial tears and can be referred to as a either intersubstance tear with a partial tear or sometimes also a complex labral tear just as with the menisci in knee MRI. There are other things to consider as well if you look at the labrum. So for example here we have first of all obviously a separation between labrum and cartilage but the cartilage is also separated from the underlying bone. So this is a cartilage delamination and this is something you really have to look out for and is sometimes not so easy to see if you don't do traction MR orthography, which is a technique that we might have a look at in the future. So we have several new patrons this week to uh, welcome. And first of all, we have Lika. Hi Lika, uh, thanks for your support. And also Kjetil, which is another pioneer patron, which is really great. And your free copy of my book is already on its way to you. And then there is Junko, who is another patron who joined during the last week. So if you want to become a patron and support this channel, go check the link in the description down below and have a look there what you get if you become a supporter. Now let's move on. The first thing that you have to know when assessing a hip MRI for labral tears is the different quadrants. And you can basically separate the hip into these four quadrants and most of the time this anterior position is referred to as the three o'clock position and in some papers is referred to as the nine o'clock position. But for me and for the rest of this video, anteriorly is always the three o'clock position irrespective of laterality of the MR exam. So if you scroll down and then here we have the iliopsoas tendon, most tears occur at this location, sometimes just beneath the tendon and some believe that actually the the friction of the tendon over the labrum that might cause some of these tears at the anterior position, but most of them are a little bit higher up at the anterior superior position at 
depending on which reference system you use at the two o'clock position or one o'clock position. So here we have this cleft here. We have a separation of the labrum from the underlying acetabular bone and also from the cartilage. The tear might not go through the whole substance here on this sequence, but it's a high grade partial tear of the labrum. You can also see this here, where we have this tear here at the sagittal view. And the sagittal sequence is one of the best sequences and probably my favorite sequence to assess the labrum. You can see here more on a lateral section and if we go medially you can see the labrum here, it's detached, we have a tear here, Tuck. okay. On the coronals it's sometimes a little bit more difficult to see but if you go anteriorly we have here the iliopsoas tendon and the tear was close by so we are here, this is the tear. And then here at the superior position, we have this little dot with high signal intensity, but that's just probably still normal and there is not a real separation here from the cartilage or from the underlying bone. And this is another example why you should have a look at all your sequences. Again, we are scrolling through here. So we have the labrum here and on this sequence everything is a little bit gray we don't really see a really nice tear we have some artifacts as well here we have some signal changes but if you take another sequence here which is a proton density weighted sequence here then on the sagittal you can nicely see the labral tear this is a full thickness or a complete labral tear at the base of the labrum detached from the cartilage and also from the acetabular bone here And here on the coronals, if we go anteriorly where we saw the tear, it's not really visible here on the coronals. And if we go back, this is now the supraposterior location, then we can see this cleft here and it's very smooth. The labrum is looking nice and we have here the cartilage and this is this little cleft here that was referred to as a sublabral sulcus and it's most likely a sulcus in this case and not a pathological controllable separation. As usual, if you haven't subscribed, do it right now and also hit the like button and this notification bell, then you get an email every time I upload a new video. Just another example. Again, we have the labrum, we have this tear at the base. This is how they look normally. So always look for these signal changes here at the base of the labrum. This is the most common, common tear that you will see. And then here the sagittal, my preferred sequence, we can see here the tear, the signal change here, but we saw on the axial images here that it's going all the way through. Not so easy to see here. So this time we again have a look here, we have some signal changes at the labrum, the base, but look at this now here, we have a ganglion cyst here at the posterior labrum, originating here through the labrum and if you see any ganglion then anything you'll see is probably a tear. So we have here a tear with a perilabral ganglion cyst. This is the ganglion cyst here and there is the defect. And here the same on the coronal view. This is another nice example going down we can see at the typical location near the iliopsoas tendon a tear. The labrum here is completely detached from the acetabular bone and we have a perilabral cyst here, or a perilabral ganglion cyst, which is always indicating for some kind of trouble there in this region. And here on the sagittal view, you can also see the tear here. This time we also have signal changes to the tip of the labrum here. So this is a complex tear going all the way up here and in this direction. And this is a similar case. We have severe signal changes here in the labrum, fluid-like signal here within the labral substance. We have a tear that is running all the way from the tip to the base. And then we have a tear here with a detachment of the labrum from the underlying bone and also the cartilage. So this is a severe complex tear of the labrum at the anterosuperior position. And here a similar case with a T1 fat saturated sequence of the arthrography and you can see that we have contrast material entering this tear, this tear into the labral substance here in addition to a tear at the base. So again we have a complex, menis uh, a complex labral tear here. That's it for today folks, thanks for watching and see you next week.